it's a totally different ball game with making a record. Well, Elliot, Marcus, uh, Hello. welcome. Thank um, you. I was wondering, uh, you have been recording in the Rockfield, Rockfield Studios? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is also the place where Oasis recorded some songs. Yeah. Um, so. yeah. Was this the first time uh, you recorded there? Or was yeah, it's the first time we've ever been there. And it's, it's quite a cool place, it's quite secluded and like, it's just in the middle of Wales really. And it's nice to do like the record there, because we did part of it there and then part of it in Bath, which is like a smallish town, well, city. Yeah, it's a like nice city in the UK, but it's different when you wake up in the morning and hear like sheep. And, and animals, and then you wake up and hear sirens and car horns. You know? <laughs> it, but it enabled us to, you know, there's two very different elements, uh, and that's really contributed to the, the to production of the record, I guess. And the, the Rockfield is a really good studio, and a lot of history, and a lot of good bands been in and out of there. But I guess you try not to think about that when you're there, mm -hmm. and think about more about what you're doing. You know. <laughs> well, I can imagine that if you step inside such a studio with such a history. You know, there has to do something with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's weird being there, like, uh, it's where Queen recorded and stuff, and I spent the whole week trying to channel Freddie Mercury's spirit. I even just shaved off my beard and had a moustache and stuff. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What well, did he look like with uh, only a moustache? It, it, did, it did look... Um, <laughs> there was a slight resemblance to Freddie Mercury. I think the moustache is it. Yeah. It, it suited you. Yeah, it looked good. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I mean, Apparently Stone Roses spent a year and a half in that studio trying to record The Second Coming, mm. which I personally really like. I mean, it's open to debate, but there's definitely an underlying feeling in that studio where you think, you know, something magical could happen here, you know? Mm. Um, because it, cause this, it's got so much good gear in there and it's a really good vibe. And I think we had an inkling feeling from the moment we kind of arrived there that it, it was the place to do our album, you know? Yeah. It felt right. Has it become better doing it there? Or? How do you mean? The, the, the album, if it go, are you going to play better in, in such an environment? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Um, subconsciously, I, I imagine you do play better in a way. Mm -hmm. And they have like a, a big live room there, which is kind of what we really needed to, yeah. to, to get all in one space and be able to record together, kind of like doing a show, or, especially for this record, because it's quite like a live sounding record. So. So no overdubs, everything played in... Yeah, there's a few yeah. few overdubs and stuff, but the majority of it is all live, like all the takes, there's no dropping of drums or anything like that. It's just kind of yeah. us in a room rocking yeah. out. And we figured out that, you know, from past studio experiences that that's the, the, the only true way to really capture, like, what we're about, because I suppose we're quite an impactful live band in a lot of ways, and it's a totally different ball game with making a record, so... We want, really want to try and capture that energy that we have live, and that studio kind of enabled us to do that, and then, and then tweak it to be even bigger, you know. So, mm. yeah. in, in that way, playing live, how important has it been for the past years in yeah, working towards the album? Has it been important? Yeah, I mean, the, it's the, the last year in mm. the whole process. It's been massively important towards the album because, um, you know, we play most of the songs live before we recorded them. And I think you only kind of really get to do that on your debut because now you're touring and then you have to go make a second album or whatever. So it's kind of, those songs were already in that kind of live format where they were ready to go into a studio and just do them as you were. There was no working out to be done. There was no kind of like writing as such. We didn't do any writing in the studio. It was kind of like, this is, all the songs, we're going to record them and then that's the album. It wasn't really that much pre-production really, it was just little bits and here and there and it was just down yeah. to sort of sprinkling the fairy dust on it really and really making it evolve, you know. Um, yeah, so you really went uh, in, into the studio with 11 tracks and came out with 11 tracks on a, on a record? Or yeah, there's, there a, more there, songs? there's more, there's a few more, <laughs> but they kind of just, you know, I mean at the time we didn't know what was going to sort of end up being on and then as the process went on it through, it's just kind of like, okay, we'll leave those ones off and mm. make it just the 11 tracks that are there now. How important are those decisions? W which uh, which tracks are going to be on the, the album uh, for? Yeah, I suppose the, 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 the sound of, of the band itself. <laughs> it is important, uh, but I feel that it's uh, almost like a natural thing as well. Like, um, 
say we recorded one a, a song that isn't on the album it, but we might really like, but it doesn't fit into the into the album because the album is very much an album from track one to eleven and yeah yeah I think that's yeah it's kind of it's a natural culling process where as I said by the time we got to the end of it you kind of had an idea in your head of the 11 tracks and then you try and do track listings and stuff and then see what fits and there was always a few that just didn't didn't sit in it quite right so we just left them off.